No. But also... That's right, this is a CX40 Atari joystick from 1977, which is about 45 years ago, which sounds wrong, but I checked and it's really not. Originally released alongside the Atari 2600 game console, it has a simple and straightforward design, featuring a single joystick and a red button on top, allowing you to move in a whole 8 directions. Although that is kind of a lie because it only has 4 physical directional switches and the diagonals are activated when any two are used at the same time, which makes them effectively useless. This was great for games like this and this but we don't want to play 2D games, we want to play something more advanced, something like this or this Okay, maybe not that one. So, what happens when you try to play a modern game with an Atari joystick from 1977? And can you beat a game like Minecraft? Well, there's only one way to find out. But before I did that, I started out by testing some FPS games, like CSGO. Oh, I've got one, I've got him. No, I'm not gonna. But I decided that might be a bit too easy. So I went with something a bit different. Odd Black Ops 3 Zombies. And the controls for this are a bit more finicky. So forward is forward, left and right is to strafe. But because we have aim down sight, I've set that to toggle and bound it as back on the joystick. And as you can see, it worked, but I think the highest round I ever got was 4. So I gave up and decided to play Sea of Thieves instead. After that I looked at trying some platformers like Fall Guys. Ah, oh, bollocks. Mainly because it seemed to be the easiest option, because all you have to do is bind the movements to the joystick, and the button can be set to jump and dive. And while that kind of worked, I also only got to like the second round, so take that as you will. Yeah, I think that's another fall, guys. I also decided to try a bit of Cuphead. <laughs> but I managed to end up perfectly recreating that one gaming journalist video from a few years ago. I promise I'm not this shit at the game. There really just is no good control layout for Cuphead on this controller. But then I thought, hey, they made racing games for the Atari 2600, so why not try a modern racing game? So I did. The control scheme for this is pretty simple too. Joystick forward is accelerate, backwards is brake, and left or right is to turn left or right. And after a quick practice round, I decided to go for a proper race. And that ended well. Uh oh. I can't seem to turn left. Oh no. I think I broke the car a little bit. I also attempted some Dark Souls, and surprisingly, I think this is the game that I had the most success with. I even managed to beat the first boss, but I didn't dare go much further. Maybe I'll come back to that one in the future. Who knows. So I can hear you asking, what does this have to do with Minecraft? Well, you see... If you think about it, Minecraft has a lot of moving parts. You know, you've got to be able to attack, run, place items, mine stuff, craft. Actually, that's kind of it. But when you're limited by 9 inputs, you have to make sure that the control layout works flawlessly. Or just, at all. And this is what I came up with. We have up as forwards, down as place items, left and right looks left and right, the red button attacks, but if you hold down the red button and press up or down, it looks up or down. If you press left while holding the red button, it scrolls through the hotbar and then right opens the inventory, which sounds a bit insane, but I promise it works. Except for when it comes to crafting, but um, we'll worry about that later. So I loaded into a brand new world and got to work. I started by collecting some wood. Right, I'm gonna start by getting some wood. Or at least as much wood as I possibly could. Hey, right. Uh oh. Which was slightly harder than you would expect, because by this point my 55 year old controller was really starting to not like the left. Despite this, I had collected enough wood to start crafting. And this is the point at which I found the flaw in my control layout. Right, so because up, down, and left, right aren't technically on the same joystick, it takes about 4 to 5 business days to move anything in the inventory. And don't even get me started on crafting. But I had already spent way too long making this video, so I continued anyway. Then, I made myself some sticks for a wooden pickaxe. That would be used once, and then never again. That's not a bad start, all things considered. Alright. I guess I should try build a house real quick. With the crafting complete, I decide to build my first small shack. Wait, that's not too bad. 
I mean, I don't hate it. It's a little dark on the inside, but it's got its charm. I had originally planned on staying inside the entire night. I guess while I've got the time here, I can make a pickaxe. And the sword. However, conveniently, I had forgotten to collect any wool. So rather than wait till morning in my dark shack, I bravely decided to venture out in search of some wool. Which is something I would quickly come to regret. Ow. No. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, no, what? Oh, this is bad. What is this? Oh, that's bad. No, oh, he's followed me in here. Bro, get out of here. Please. Fuck. After dying about 20 times during the night, and having been kicked out of my brand new shack, Okay, and, uh, well, I can't go back in there, I guess. I managed to collect some wool, and decided to relocate to my new house, which was actually just a hole I dug into the side of a mountain. After digging out the hole a bit further, I finally had a new place, where I could get to building some new furniture. Gotta make myself a furnace. Including a bed, and thankfully some torches. I'm gonna start working on a mine. Just like a 1x2 down this way. From here, I could start my mission to acquire some iron. And by this point, I think the CX-40 was really starting to feel its age, because it was not happy about going left at all. But that was okay, because in the meantime, I had found enough iron ore to make my iron pickaxe. And from here, my plan was just to keep mining down, until we reached diamond level. But then, I found something slightly more interesting. That's right, I had run into a cave, and even better, we had found some diamonds. But there was only one problem. Everything in the cave wanted to kill me. Undeterred, I mined as quickly as I could. But before I could pick up that diamond... Wait, no. Brother man, please. The zombies killed me. All I had to do was run down as quickly as I could to pick up that diamond before it despawned. And yeah, I died again. Well, sh So I didn't manage to save my first diamond, but it's okay. There's one left. And in theory, we only need two more. Actually, three for an enchanting table. I haven't really played that much since the Caves and Cliffs update, so I don't actually know what level to find diamonds at anymore. I spent all of my coal to light up this cave so I didn't die every time I came down here. And I spent some time collecting some iron. So I'm gonna make a full set of iron armor and a sword so I don't die quite as often. A few moments later. Look at that. That's a huge mine shaft. Okay, I have a 1000 IQ plan to get down here. Just bear with me. Gotta make this. Gotta get this. Put it there. Wait a minute. Perfect. Wait, I don't have a way out of here now. For some reason, I thought the abandoned mine shaft usually meant a stronghold nearby. But in this case, no, that wasn't true. Instead, I found a spider spawner. Ah, oh, fuck. I also found a minecart with a chest, which had a looting 2 book inside, which I thought might be useful later on. I also found some diamonds. And made a new friend, I think. Can I help you, boss man? Why is he just kind of staring at me? And then I found a few more diamonds on the way back up to the surface. Ah, getting up there is gonna suck. Many hours later. Finally, diamond pick. That's right, after about 5 hours of gameplay, I managed to make my first diamond pickaxe. And I'll be dead honest, I had originally planned to just leave it there, and say, yeah, you can feasibly beat Minecraft. But I figured I could do better, so I moved on to phase 2. I don't know why, but that's satisfying. From here I was able to mine some obsidian, which we would need to get to the nether, and for making myself an enchantment table, which I would put here and then never use. I would then immediately almost lose my first diamond pick, Wait, that actually could've been quite bad. Um, okay. After that, I made sure to farm a bunch of sugarcane to make a few books for my enchantment table, which again, I would never use. I also built this never portal if you're wondering. Here's a clip of that in the background. I genuinely didn't know what to put over this footage. So, um, you ever seen the firm with Tom Cruise? Oh, I forgot to light the portal. But before we go in, I'm gonna craft an anvil for later. A bow. And a diamond sword, sword. Do you think Tobuscus would sue me if I made a diamond sword? I mean, he does have a patent. I then finally made my way into the nether. Right, I guess it's time to, uh, screw the nether. <laughs> After being greeted by a friendly guest... Hold on, I can deflect this. ...and this piglin... I died again. At this point, I headed in a random direction, in the hopes of finding a fortress. And by that, I meant this basalt area over here. I think it's basalt anyway. Is it basalt? 
Whatever. Alright, I might sound insane, but does this buy remind anyone of that castle that Fiona's stuck in in the first Shrek? And after maybe like an hour, I finally found the fortress. And you know how I mentioned that the controller was really not happy going left? Well, now the red button had started to not work at all. I mean, it seemed to work only one out of two times, which led to a bit more of this. And I'm dead again. On the upside, I found another two whole diamonds. Ooh, diamonds. See, at this point, I could feel the controller fading away, but I was that close to the end. All I had to do was collect the blaze rods. This is such a bad idea. Ow, ow, ow. Kill some endermen. Kill a few more endermen. Craft a few eyes of ender. Follow them across five postcodes to a stronghold. You ever seen the film Planes, Trains and Automobiles? Well this is boats walking, then more walking. Damn. Make sure to keep that joke in the video. Just dig straight down from this convenient hole. Enter the stronghold and find the end portal without being murdered by silverfish. Can you, like, go away? Fill up all 12 holes. And then get ready to fight the ender dragon. Is what I would have said if this hadn't happened. Okay, so it's worse than it looks, but the problem here is, my CX-40 kind of died. Yeah, I don't quite know what happened, the red button seemed to stop working completely, and the switches underneath the joystick worked fine, but I was in the nether, I had found the fortress, and then it just died on me. I managed to fix it temporarily with some rubber bands, and it would work for a few minutes at a time, so I cheated a little bit, and did technically beat the Ender Dragon with an Atari joystick, but it doesn't really count. I did try to beat the rest of the game legit, but it just kept dying eventually, and I think this was the controls way of telling me that it just wasn't meant to be. It's either that, or I got scammed buying this broken ass controller. So to answer the question posed at the start of the video, can you play modern games with a 50 year old Atari controller? No. But also, thanks for watching. <laughs>